Hello, I'm Charles Kamen. In 1954, a strange and mysterious creature emerged from the depths of Tokyo Bay and leapt onto the movie screens of the entire world. Nearly half a century later, Godzilla is coming to the acting capital of the world. He's hungry for new challenges and ready to make a big impression on the streets of the Big Apple. Not bad for a movie star pushing 50. She never have had the eel for breakfast. Who, who suggested that? My whole concept was based on totally changing Godzilla. He's too fast! I wanted to start new, like I, like I had the idea for Godzilla like yesterday. And how would you do like a movie that, like this today? The task of reinventing Godzilla for a new generation fell to Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin, the creative team behind Stargate and Independence Day. Their twin talents for taking familiar stories in new directions and destroying national landmarks put the duo at the top of the monster's A-list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We make popcorn movies. We love popcorn movies. When you have that kind of passion for the films you make, there's a chance that that passion may become infectious. It's weird, right? It's like I'm watching a movie. I forget for this moment, really, what's happening. The film stars Matthew Broderick as a scientist hot on the tail of the rampaging Godzilla. Maria Petillo plays a fledgling television news reporter receiving careful guidance from one of the medium's veteran anchors. Hank Azaria plays a New York news cameraman who's obviously had too many cups of coffee. And international superstar Jean Reno plays a role shrouded in a haze of pre-release secrecy. And like me, Godzilla appears as himself. I don't see Godzilla as a monster. He's, uh, he's like a fish out of the sea. He's in the wrong world. <laughs> the filmmakers started by giving Godzilla a complete tail-to-snout makeover, utilizing the latest in state-of-the-art visual effects technology. Our Godzilla is a lot leaner. That's the first thing. The exercise craze has even affected Godzilla. The man must be taking aerobics or step classes or spinning or something. When they made the Godzilla films, they were limited to putting a, a guy in a big rubber suit lumbering down a street because that's as far as they could go technologically at the time. This felt to me it was more respectful in some aspect to not try to alter the Godzilla that was done for generation and just step on to doing a new creature, a new direction. You still have the spirit of the old Godzilla within that new guy. Only now can we really present Godzilla in the way that I think the original authors intended him to be which is lethal and fast and agile, and with a few new tricks up his sleeve. What else did you find out? We know that he eats tons of fish. He's amphibious, he's a burrower, and he's pregnant. It makes perfect sense. Lots of animals travel great distances for reproduction. That's what he's doing in New York. He's nesting. Nesting? So after we kill the creature, then we'll search for the nest. Fire! Fire! It's kind of sad because it's not his fault, any of it. You know, he was made by us. The, the original Godzilla was made in Japan shortly after World War II. And obviously in the minds of a lot of Japanese people were, was about nuclear radiation and, and what had happened to their country after having two uh, nuclear bombs dropped on them. Uh, and so it was that fear of what we have done to our environment and our world that could come back and haunt us. And so we wanted, in our version, to stay faithful to the origins of Godzilla. The first of its kind. He stands as tall as the Flatiron Building in New York City. From head to tail, his length matches the height of Tokyo's impressive tower. His foot is as big as this small temple. He can run as fast as this Shikansen train about 200 miles an hour. And his eyeballs are as big as this Chochin lantern. They say, well, he's 20 stories tall, but that's a little hard to visualize. I don't see it! This is the first time I thought, well, if his first foot is there, and the other foot's there, and the other one's there, and there, like the size of the gate. We act to nothing so much, because they're all going to computer in later, Godzilla, and so we got kind of used to reacting to things that aren't there. Like kind of take it up is then the part when you like actually film it. I right. mainly kind of explain what he does. A lot for the actor is important where he has to look. And then it's their imagination what they do with it. Running would be a good idea. For cast and crew, 
working with the leading lizard was not always fun and games. In the case of Godzilla's radioactively mutated ego, size mattered. Who writes this? He gets a lot of attention. A lot. He has special needs. That's what they say. He has special needs, Godzilla. He has to eat fresh fish. He can't eat what everybody else eats. That's a lot of fish. Very difficult. Very difficult. Never comes out of his trailer. Also, like, where you park his trailer? I learned that problem. He does have the biggest trailer. I was pretty upset by that. But, you know, who's going to go tell him? You know, hey, man, can I... Hey, can I talk to you for a second? Who is your agent? You know, he doesn't, he just blows you right off. By the time you get that out, he's like taking three steps and he's, he's gone. Nobody has the nerve to tell him, this is a movie where there are a lot of other people in it. Do you want to be in this movie or don't you? You know, they don't want to say that to him. I think they're afraid of him. Oh. Ah! I'm Charles Kamen. Have a lizard free tomorrow. <laughs> Terry? Kamen. Yeah, look. Have we fact-checked any of this stuff about his head is as big as his eye is as big as, or are we just blowing smoke up our own minds?